Hello my friends, William Poloniak here again and tonight I'm going to make some juice with a large batch of French sorrel for my greens plus carrots and a few other ingredients. Let's look at my ingredients. In addition to my French sorrel for greens and I have a large batch of French sorrel I have 100 grams of ginger, a whole head of garlic, 140 grams of turmeric, a large bunch of red Swiss chard, baby celery, and a few beets. Now I'm going to start making juice and today I'm going to start with my French sorrel. Now the first thing I'm going to do is put on the near zero blowback cutter it has five blades with teeth cut into it and if you don't have one you can modify your own cutter send it to me and I will modify it for you so we'll put the near zero cutter on plug in the thermometer and as usual I'm going to start with three or four ice cubes to cool down the feed tube and the cutter. Next I'm going to start with the French sorrel. working hard so I'm going to clean my grid and slice off the green pulp. Greens are very fibrous normally so you want to clean your grid often. And I want to point out that because the near zero blowback cutter is doing such a good job I don't have to use the J grid I'm using the 1 8 inch holes grid. That's the number two grid. So we'll feed in some more red sorrel. juicer ever stops like that, shut it off, give it a jump start by turning it on and off a few times. Here's the last of my friend Sorrel. Now I can see my motors working hard so I'm going to clean my grid again and I'm also going to check my cutter to see if the cutter is clean of greens pulp. So let's take a look at the cutter. Unplug the thermometer first. Well it's not bad but there is quite a bit of green pulp on there so we'll clean that off, assemble and start again. Next I'm going to shred the red Swiss chard and we'll put in three or four leaves but first plug in the thermometer now for the baby celery but a small bunch because celery is very very fibrous
again a small bunch of baby celery. Now I'm going to clean my grid and then start on the beets. And after the beets, the carrots. But because some of my beets are so big, I'm going to cut them and make them into manageable sizes and hopefully cutting them in half will be correct enough. Let's find out. Yes, that'll be good. We'll start on the carrots, and because they're so small, I'm going to put in three or four at a time. I want to point out one thing I love about this front loading feed tube I can see what's going on in here, and the carrots are forcing through the last of the greens. So what I'm going to do is put in a few more carrots and then clean the grid one more time. And we'll clean the grid again. And then we'll continue with the carrots. Here's the last of my carrots. And I want to point out again that one of the things I love about this front loading feed tube is I can see in here whether or not the produce is all shredded. It looks like it is, but I'm going to put in a couple of handfuls of carrot pulp and force that last bit of produce through. Now I'm going to clean the grid and the grid holder, the cutter and the feed tube, mix my produce and make some juice. I will unplug that. Let's take a look at the cutter. Now a little bit of carrot pulp left on the blades but we'll just clean that off and then clean it out of here. We'll need a bigger knife to do that. The next step as usual is to mix the carrots with the greens and I want to remind you again whenever there's carrots mixed with green pulp your mixed pulp will not stick to your cloth and you want to rotate your bowl in both directions to get a really good mix as I'm doing here. And once you've got a good mix, we start folding these into cloths and making some juice. Next step is to take the cloths out of the freezer, crack the ice on the corner of the table so they're easier to take apart. And I'm going to show you my six cloth less work method. Two more cloths, centered left to right, centered front to back, turn it on and all the way back, back it off a little bit. I'm going to mix this now. Two scoops on top of the spent pulp. Flat 
on that, set it aside. And when you're on your last cloth, especially after your first scoop, advance that all the way. So two scoops. Center left to right, center front to back, all the way back, back it off, and continue. Now later I'm going to put only one scoop on top because this pad is getting very, very thick. I'm on my last cloth, I'll advance that all the way. Two more scoops. Up a little bit. it again to show you how we get 10% or more juice using the Whole Health Foundation Premium Model. Any Norwalk juicer can be upgraded, by the way, with my premium parts so you can, if you have a Norwalk juicer, you can improve it and upgrade it. Now oh, my bowl is just too full to continue pressing. So I'm going to set my tray back again and fill more bottles. And again, leaving 10% to add filtered or distilled water later. I find the juice to be too rich anyway, so adding water is really good, especially if you're a bad diabetic. Now I'm forming this spent pulp into a tight ball. To show you my folding technique because to avoid slippage under the tremendous pressure I'm folding the claws under several times so they don't burst apart. So here you can see I've repackaged the pulp into three double packets and I'm going to use a measuring beaker to show how much more juice we can get. So we'll put two packets in the press. Center it. This is very important, especially at this stage. So center it left to right, front to back, all the way back. And when I get juice flow, I'm going to back it up because I don't want it to go up too fast. So we'll back it off a little bit. it all the way. And advance that all the way. Now there we've got 18 ounces in my containers about ready to overflow. So I'm going to stop this and pour it into my container. We'll press another couple of cloths. Well, there's another eight ounces. Now I'm topping these bottles off so there's no air in the bottle whatsoever. If you have air in the bottle, they will go bad faster. If you have no air in the bottle, it'll last between 5 and 10 days. I've had them last more than 10 days. So what I'm going to do now is cap it off, put them in the fridge. I usually try to make enough to last 5 days. Not longer than that, you're probably pushing it. 
Well, my friends, here I have five, 10, 12 bottles. And remember, one and a half of these bottles was from repackaging and pressing the pulp again. And I got more than 10% juice from pressing the pulp again. And your most valuable nutrients come from the last 10% of your press. So I also got enough for a taste test. So let's do a taste test. Well, my friends, here we have another garden harvest juice with an abundance of French sorrel and also red Swiss chard, baby celery, beets, some ginger, garlic, and turmeric. Let's give it a taste. Oh, that's delicious. One of my best formula yet. Well, I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to call me, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com. I'll see you in the next video.